obviously we want to talk about your work and to give it space to be engaged with by others and to explore what it means, where it's going. Yeah. Um, it's very political, your work, and it starts with the body. Yeah. Can you maybe explain for those who don't know your work or understand it, um, how you would explain it? If you were maybe in an elementary school, how yeah. do you explain it to that group? Um, so, hmm, that's great. I don't know, that, have I explained my work to elementary school students? Maybe. Um, so I would definitely say that I talk about how, um, how, how we feel about not only our bodies, but ourselves, the fullness of our identities. Um, in all the ways that that exists, whether that is your size or your race or your age or your gender or your um, abilities or disabilities, any of those sorts of things, how we feel about those things impacts not only us, but how does it also impact the world? How does it impact whether or not everybody has resources and opportunities and a fair chance to succeed in life? Um, and what can we do to shift how we really understand our own bodies and our identities to love them more. We use this framework I call mm. radical self-love. How do we embody radical self-love in, in a way that on, not only changes how we experience our own bodies, but also helps to disrupt the systems that keep us from all being allowed to have all the same opportunities and access and love in the world. If I were saying it to a fifth grader, I think that's how I'd say it. Okay, cool. Yeah. So when it comes to, because like fish and water analogy, right? Yes, Culture. totally. So when it comes to um, the light bulb moment, mm -hmm. how do you help people grasp that idea of yeah. embodied living of culture? Absolutely. So what I think I try to remind people is that we, that this framework of radical self-love that I talk about is not something outside of us. It's not something we have to figure out how to attain. Hmm. It's actually how we all arrived here. And the way that I help people grasp that is like, I just want you to think about a toddler, like your, yeah. your current three-year-old in your life somewhere in the world, right? That kid is totally in love with themselves. <laughs> that yeah. kid thinks they're awesome. They think their body is awesome. They think their identity is awesome. They think it's really cool that you are who you are too. Yeah. They're curious about it without judgment or shame. That is the way that we all arrived here. That's actually the human default status. That's right. our factory setting. Yeah. <laughs> and what happens is somewhere between that time and adulthood, we start being fed messages that tell us that that default setting is inaccurate. Right. Right. That actually there is something wrong with us. That we're not enough this or we're too much that across a multitude of, you know, ways of being. Mm. And so... I, the work is about helping us identify what are those messages that we have taken in? What are the, where do they come from in our world? And how have we started to believe them yeah. in such a way that we no longer remember our factory setting? Right. <laughs> that we no longer remember that inherent sense of worthiness and enoughness that we all arrived here as. So how do we get back to that? That's the, the crux of my work and how I hope that that moment drops us back to right. Oh, there was some point where I too, you know, was the toddler, not worrying right. about my thighs. <laughs> right? I was there at some point. Yeah. Oh, what do I need to do to get back? And then my work is about helping us figure out yeah. how we get back.